What is a synapse? Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in this video I'm going to explain about the nervous system, about the structure and function of nerves, but most importantly how a signal is sent between nerves, which is a synapse. Now this is really important for your level 3 anatomy and physiology exam, whereby you can expect between 3 and 8 questions or multiple choice to relate to this subject, in particular about the nervous system. Now I've got some mock questions to help test your knowledge based on everything that I teach you here today. So all you need to do is scroll down if you're on our blog and you'll see the mock questions at the bottom or click the link and you'll be able to take straight to that blog where you can find those mock questions. So let's get started. First of all, what is a synapse? Now a synapse is basically the meeting point between two uh, two nerves. So you've got two nerves that are sending a signal. Now instead of these nerves running all the way from our brain all the way down to wherever we want the signal to go, it's not one long nerve, instead it's a joining of lots of different nerves just for one signal. So in order to make that possible, there's basically a gap between the nerves and that's the synapse. And that's whereby a, a transmission or a message is sent across the gap. And we need to know about how this works in relation to sending a signal and passing that information from one neuron to the other. But essentially, a synapse is the joining, it's the transition or the neural junction between those two nerves. Now, the next thing that we need to recap before I can kind of explain how this works in more detail is just some key features of a neuron itself or of a nerve cell. So the first thing to know about is that you've, when you look at an image of a neuron, you can see that you've got the sort of cell body, which is the main sort of chunky part of it. It's maybe circular or looks a little bit star shaped. And that's a really important part of the cell in terms of the integrity of the cell itself. Then inside that you've got a nucleus, which is kind of like the little brain of the cell. And then off that you've got dendrites. Now these dendrites are basically the spaces whereby these branch out to allow you to go and that allow that signal to be re reached onto other cells. Then you'll notice you have one long line, which is an axon. That's where the main signal is sent from that cell body, from that nucleus, all the way down uh, the length of the neuron so it can cover as much space as possible before then getting to the end of the neuron whereby you've got the axon terminal. Now the axon terminal is the place whereby the synapse is and that's going to join onto another nerve cell via their dendrites and it literally continues the whole way through. So what we call this is a presynaptic neuron is the first one. And then after that, that signal goes from the, dend from the uh, dendrites and the nucleus on one end, travels down the axon, which is covered in that myelin sheath the whole way down to keep it protected. And then when it gets to the end, it gets to the axon terminal. And at that point, that's the gap before it then joins the postsynaptic neuron, which is basically the second neuron. And at that point, that nerve then goes in again with the dendrites first and the the synapse is whereby the axon terminal of the first neuron meets the dendrite and the axon terminal on the uh, on the second neuron. So basically, we're looking at the gap between the two. Now, let's just say we want to send a signal through the body. So, for example, we put our hand on a hot stove, and as a result, we need to send that signal from our receptors in our hand all the way up to our brain, make a decision about what needs to happen and then send that signal all the way back just so that we can move our hand off the hot stove. That's a really crude analogy of what's happening, but it helps you understand that this is happening for every action, every reaction in our body that you can possibly think of. That same signal processing is happening. So this is not just one nerve going all the way up and one nerve going all the way down. I like to see it as a train journey. Now, if you were to take a train journey from, let's just say Edinburgh up in Scotland, all the way down to, let's say Newquay in Cornwall, okay, all the way down. This isn't going to be one train journey that takes you the whole way. Instead, you'll have to get off the train, change at a station, get on another train and move to another station uh, and go on another train. And they all link up. And that's what's happening with your nerves. So you've got these transmission going through the nerve itself, which is an electrical uh, impulse. It's called an action potential as the signal goes all the way through the nerve. And then that's like you getting on the train at Edinburgh and then taking that train all the way down to your next station. 
then at the station you have to get off the train you have to walk across the platform to get on the next station that's the synapse that's you basically walking across the gap and that gap is usually sent via a chemical messenger and this happens the whole way through your journey from Scotland all the way down to Newquay all these different changes in trains that you have to take is basically this changing in lots of different nerves and how they all join up along the way so then we get to the synapse now what's happening at this synapse is like i said a moment ago you've got a pre-synaptic neuron which is basically the first one that the signal is coming from and then you've got a post-synaptic neuron which is basically the second nerve that the signal is going to so if you look at this and sort of consider how this would work, usually there there is an image sort of of a like it looks like a bulb shape, which is the axon terminal, the end point of the first neuron, and then you can kind of see that it joins up with a bulb shape underneath for the second neuron. Now what happens is that the signal gets sent down through the axon, gets to the the axon terminal on the first neuron, and at that point there's these little synaptic vessels. And inside these synaptic vessels are lots of neurotransmitters. Now these job, like the nerves, like the name suggests, neuro, meaning nerve, and transmitter, like, like with a, a radio transmitter, it's sending a signal. So the signal that has happened all the way, like the train journey, that electrical signal that's happened through the first neuron, signals to the neurotransmitters at the synaptic vessels that they want to release, saying like, I need to just send this signal, you can now release. And it basically changes the ion and the electrical status of that, of that whole area. Once that changes, the, the signal or the neurotransmitters are sent to hop the gap and they go across the gap and then join in to the next uh, part of the synapse which like we said before is the second neuron so they join on to the receptors on the very end of this synapse which then means that that can turn on the next neuron to send the signal down through that neuron so essentially you've got an electrical stimulus coming through the very first neuron then a little chemical neurotransmitters hop the gap and then from there the electrical signal carries on for the next neuron and that's it in crudest terms for understanding the, the nerves and how a synapse works. You can learn this in huge details of ions changing and action potentials and all the different types of um, signals that happen with neurotransmitters. But for level three anatomy and physiology, really what you need to know is what the synapse is and how it works and understand that it is the gap that has that chemical neurotransmitter signal. So now you know all the information you need to know about a synapse, you know how it works from a, a transmission of information from one nerve all the way through to another nerve, and you know how this works inside our nervous system. The next step is for you to go and test your knowledge using the mock questions we've prepared. So like I said at the beginning, you can do this by accessing the link that's with this video, or if you're on our blog, just scroll down and you'll see them there. Also, if you haven't already checked out our Revision Mastery Bootcamp, this will help you break down information, just like what I've just taught you here about the nervous system. That's just one of eight modules that you need to know as part of your Level 3 Anatomy exam. You can learn about all the other modules inside that bootcamp. So again, scroll down and you'll see more information on how you can join us for the Revision Bootcamp. So that's the end of today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. And I look forward to hearing from you about what your big takeaway is from today. So just drop that in the comments. What is it that you've learned today? One thing, and just drop that in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next video. And also don't forget to subscribe if you're on our YouTube channel. Take care. Thank you.